Namaste beautiful yogis. I have been meaning to do a what I eat in a day video uh, for vegan uh, breastfeeding but I haven't had time to do a proper one uh, in the last <laughs> three and a half months so I figured I would just kind of tell you one uh, like I'm right now in a period of time when I'm eating kind of the same thing every day so I'll kind of cover that and show you my chronometer and how to read your stats and um, I'll try to share more videos or a full what eat in a day a video in the future. So basically, I am pretty uh, pretty good, especially when it comes to pregnancy and breastfeeding, with um, kind of paying attention attention to nutrition uh, and to nutrients, mac micronutrients, not so much macro. Macro is your carbs, proteins, and fats that in calories. That is not as important as macronutrients, your minerals, vitamins, uh, amino acids, etc. So um, I have been eating differently from through the different stages of pregnancy and breastfeeding. When I first started breastfeeding, I was eating quite a lot, probably around 3,000 calories because dates were in season. It is really easy to pack calories. And for some reason, I probably was building my milk supply or just recovering from birth. But I was just eating a lot of uh, carbs uh, uh, from dates and apples. So that was my main source of carbs. And then I was eating other things, of course, seasonally. Right now, in the, less, in the last week or so, at least five days, but probably it could be more, it could be seven days, I have had this obsession. I go with my um, cravings always. I developed an obsession to eat cantaloupe. I think because I, I tasted a few cantaloupes from one cantaloupe from Trader Joe's and I was like, oh my god, this is like the best thing ever. It tasted so good since then I've been running to Trader Joe's to buy specifically those organic cantaloupes. So I've been doing this. I uh, do intermittent fasting. There is a video that I've posted on Beautiful Yogis, my second channel. Um, with um so basically i i probably will post this on my second channel i will do intermittent fasting till four i started waking up early but i still eat late because i work through the day and i um uh, i deal with baby who she's right now kicking her little legs here next to me and um so I do intermittent fasting with my melon latte recipes on my website, with my lattes. I do a coffee latte first thing in the morning. So I do one cup of coffee. Uh, through, uh, I started doing uh, a pour over filter, love it, and with nut milk. So those are kind of small caloric things, the lattes. They don't um, spike up my metabolism. Uh, or my hunger or my digestion uh, I should say my hunger or digestion so I just have my lattes or my uh, water or my tea or uh, some blended uh, drinks see buckthorn uh, blended uh, drink I have that throughout the day up until I work out and I'm ready to eat um, now lately uh, since this uh, thing started uh, with the cantaloupes I've been having a little bit of chocolate in the morning, say three squares or four squares, two to four squares. So that goes almost in the intermittent fasting uh, period of my day. You see it's not really intermittent fasting, but if you do it, you see it's pretty, you're running on a pretty uh, empty belly and it feels good. So um, when I do my workout or yoga, then I eat one to two cantaloupes like around one and a half cantaloupe and then I set a, set aside the seeds for later latte or for tomorrow latte and then I go for a walk and after my walk maybe some work maybe just breastfeeding and I um, I do um, a dinner which has been again I specifically my body asked for it it's been cauliflower and olives and I get low sodium black Spanish olives and then I soak them additionally in water so I get more of the salt out so they're pretty low in salt and sometimes I do tofu dressing for my cauliflower so I eat raw cauliflower uh, I found really good cauliflowers that are not very cabbage tasting like they're not spicy they're just crunchy and bland and I just eat, it, eat them with olives or garlic and olives um, and, or um, just tofu dip and olives. 
So very simple, but uh, my taste buds have been wanting it to be as simple as possible, just the most basic type of taste. I just want the plain cauliflower with the plain olives. The first two to three months after I gave birth, I had to have garlic often. I don't know why, but there was a physiological need for it. Maybe for milk production, maybe for um, immunity for baby. I don't know. I'm very specific with garlic. I crave it a few times in the year, but I eat it when I crave it. And I craved it almost every day. Stinky, but it was something with it. I don't know what. So that's, those have been my meals. Sometimes I do have just fruit day and let me tell you that produces extra milk if you have fruit for lunch and fruit for dinner. And I'll show you my chronometer just so you see that although this, you think, oh my God, you're eating just that, where's the bread, where's the beans, uh, where's, you know, the extras. Um, I'll show you that it is enough. Now, some days I don't eat for weeks and weeks on end like this. This is just for one week it was just what I craved and I only craved that and I noticed that if I'm severely underslept I uh, my taste buds are even more simple it's just because that's how it goes with constant breastfeeding of a newborn let me show you hey baby are you falling asleep we were reading a book and now she's trying to put herself to sleep she's good about finding ways to put herself to sleep by eating her blanket of course and that's our book <laughs> and here is chronometer let me take you through it so here are my foods um there is a little bit of dark chocolate um uh, blue diamond coconut almond milk a head of cauliflower i i put two cantaloupes because one day some days i just want some days two whatever uh, you know my time permits and or my craving whatever my cravings call for there is uh tofu um tomatoes um this particular day here there is some sweet uh, cherries and grapes cocoa powder for a hot cocoa um coffee those uh, i don't need those every day but i had it yesterday or the other day coconut water during the intermittent fasting stage snappy so it actually is pretty there is some um, variety but some days it's less variety it's just chocolate cauliflower olives and cantaloupe as the base and nutritional waste and let me take you through the stats there is 18 uh, 1800 calories uh, a little higher on fat 20 percent fat because of the chocolate nut milk and olives um and we have 70 grams of protein. This is whooping 70 grams for me. It's normally a little less, 260 carbs because melons are not that high in carbs and sugar and fat. So look at this. It's covering every nutritional uh, need I have. Folate, there it is. It's uh, 1200, uh, uh, 243% uh, percent of my folate needs. B12, that's coming from the nutritional yeast and the nut milk vitamin c it's a thousand percent almost vitamin a 14 by the way vitamin a from uh, uh, plant sources is non-toxic you cannot get that much it will just give beautiful color to your skin and protection from the sun so don't worry if it's coming from animal sources or supplements then it's toxic calcium i did cover my calcium pretty well 200 percent um iron everybody's so worried about iron and anemia on a vegan diet look at this 308 percent i'll show you what's coming from what fiber a good amount of fiber now uh let me cover this you will ask uh, do you get bloated when you eat uh, that uh, cruciferous you know broccoli cabbage uh, no um, after a while of being vegan you will stop getting bloated just because you develop the enzymes that are gonna break down your food your body knows what kind of food you're gonna eat so once your food is uh, vegan your digestion will be geared towards vegan food but when you are eating meat and dairy and stuff and you eat some plant foods you can experience gas and bloating because your body is not prepared to digest that and it doesn't have the enzymes and the power it takes a while to switch and it's not comfortable switch but it's very worth it so let's go back to our playground here and so zooming in um i hope everything is obvious but you can see so energy i have entered by the way the value synchronometer 
for uh, for a breast for breastfeeding. Um, so um, this is not for your typical iron needs. It's your uh, high iron needs. And from here you can see I'm a little higher on fat for an 80, 10, 10, but I don't care. I just eat whatever I want to eat. Sometimes 15%, 10, 20. So I am pretty good on omega 3s, 1.2 grams. So you always want for a low inflammation in your body, you want good omega 3s in your body. Um, here no trans fats, of course, protein 70 gram. I am covering all my amino acids, but chronometer doesn't give you for every food the amino acid. So that's why it may appear a little lower. But in general, I'm covering them. Now zinc is a little bit of a thing that you have to pay attention to on a vegan diet. So you see it's coming from nutritionalists, cantaloupe. Cantaloupe is a powerhouse of everything. Cantaloupe and cauliflower, both of them are powerhouses. Let me tell, take you back to the fats. The omega trees are coming from cantaloupe and from tofu and from cauliflower and from olive. So the, those are my omega trees. So you see how important these four foods are. Uh, here going to calcium. Calcium is from the supplemental calcium in the milk, from the tofu, from the cauliflower, and from the olives. Those are my top and cantaloupe sources. And keep in mind the tea that I make from the seeds from the cantaloupe, they're not accounted here because there is no such accounting, and they are probably very high in many things. Selenium, I could top it off if I add a um, um, Brazil nut, which sometimes I do, but you see it's coming from nutritionist, tofu, cantaloupe, cauliflower. Uh, and we have sodium. I did pull the sodium out of my olive, so I'm, I suspect I'm at 12. Um, Milli 1200 milligrams which is where you want to be you don't want to be here this is gonna create discomfort in your body and water retention uh, zinc as i said it's a little bit problematic so nutritionalists can help obviously cantaloupe and cauliflower and tofu are my sources but nutritionalist is the highest mm, you always want to pay attention to your nutritional yeast uh sorry to your zinc intake uh Another thing to pay attention to is iron, of course. Look at this, 300% and we're talking 27 milligrams. So it's for breastfeeding needs, not for normal needs. It's coming, I think that's why I've been craving the olives. It's coming from my olives uh, because I eat a good amount of olives. And that's why I get the salt out of them. And you see they're really packed, really high in iron and not that many calories for how much iron it is in it. So they are nutritionally dense. Uh, so my iron is covered by cauliflower, cantaloupe, and let me show you an example. If we add one more food here, which sometimes I, uh, I've been adding it often, is it is spinach. Let's say this is eight ounces. Uh, and you can click on the food itself and it, when you go down it just shows you what that food has. Look at this, it has zinc in it. It will cover almost 100% of your iron needs, 72%, but that varies for men and non-breastfeeding women. Um, and you see it's very high in vitamin K, in vitamin A, it's 500% uh, and so forth. So, now when you click off of it, you can see where you stand. Had I added to my dip, to my tofu dip, if I had created a dip with spinach, which I do sometimes, you see how it tops off everything. Zinc, calcium, uh, fluoride, obviously. Iodine is not accounted here, but I did get some iodine through my uh, dose flakes. Dose is a seaweed, iron, manganese, and so forth. So, you see how I am covering absolutely everything. B3, B2, B1. Biotin is from the nutritionalist, so... Uh, you can supplement that, but um, folate is very good for a vegan diet. We have vitamin A, C, D is obviously from the sun or supplemental vitamin E. Where did it come from? From the almond milk and the spinach and the olives and tomatoes and vitamin K um, through the roof. Uh, so I think that pretty much covers... Uh, how nutritionally dense my diet is even though if I told anybody that I was joking that I should write a book uh, 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 called uh, chocolate um, K 
cantaloupe or leaves and cauliflower just because that's the the kick i'm on for a week now uh, but when you uh, when you punch it in you see how it covers all my needs and beyond and that har hardly ever happens on the standard american diet which people think gives you more iron and more calcium so um that's why i wanted to log in and i didn't have time to properly shoot what i eat in a day and show you my meals because being a busy mom i work i work out etc and uh, do my yoga videos which take priority yoga classes shoot my yoga classes um doing membership rebranding and all of that so much work so that's why but i really knew that this is so important to show you because you just don't realize how nutritionally dense a vegan diet is now i will be adding to my website coaching uh, and also coaching for during pregnancy you not know, just um, kind of guidance um, diet and just spiritual guidance and exercise guidance uh, for pregnancy so look out for that i'll be uh, coaching not just for pregnancy but uh, i'll be offering coaching one-on-one -on -one. i'll probably be taking only one to two clients a month so i'll create a waiting list and i will do group coaching as well so i'll add this to my website look out for it um but i just wanted to show you that um uh, vegan diet is it's done properly is nutritionally superior it can give you amazing an amazing amount of energy everything i eat is really high in water and water content so even if after right after i eat my melon maybe i my belly expands it, within an hour is down because it's just water it's 90 percent water uh and uh, it's light it feels light i feel energetic because uh, i do have two full-time jobs at the moment taking care of a newborn and um, i'm working on many levels on my business preparing a pro pregnancy program and the workshop and so forth so and just the ongoing classes and social media and so so i do have more than a full-time job and it this is i i feel it's helping me be energetic um i think uh, i covered pretty much as much as i wanted to cover and keep it somewhat short if you have questions let me know i'll uh, talk to you soon namaste and uh, let's not forget that such a diet will help you um lose your post pregnancy uh um weight if you had to lose any uh, and if you're pregnant obviously won't um, make you gain uh, too much so that you don't have to lose too much it, it is important so that your joints feel happy and uh, your mind is happy and you, you're taking care of baby um, uh, I'll talk to you soon I'll show you uh, if you like this particular type of video just talking about it and chronomena let me know because I those are easy to make shooting what i eat in a day takes a little i will shoot it once i'm done with my pregnancy program but for now i'll just show i just wanted to just do one breastfeeding video at least namaste